<laughs> All right, we got the power series today. Basically, this is going to wrap up for us. Um, all of the circle relationships with tangents and secants, it's just going to wrap it all up. And after this, we're going to have a lot of powerful theorems that will help you on the SAT, I promise, and on the ACT as well, and also, of course, in geometry. So theorem 95, we call it the chord-chord power theorem. And the chord-chord power theorem states that if two chords of a circle intersect inside the circle, then the product of the measures of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the measures of the segments of the other chord. Now, a lot of times, as you guys know, in geometry, words are really nice, and it's very important, but visuals are the, are the best. So here's the visual that I want you to see. I have two chords here. They are intersected. They intersect inside. Now, remember, don't confuse this with chord-chord angle. Remember, chord-chord angle, if I wanted to find x, it'd be a half of a plus b, right? Well, give me the x. Don't confuse that here, please. Here we're talking about the length of the chord in this case. We're not talking about the angle measures now. That's why it's not called angle. It's a chord-chord power theorem. So what this states is, when you have the two chords that intersect inside the circle, the product of the two pieces of one chord, so AE times ED, will equal CE times EB. Always. Yes, sir. It does not necessarily make them congruent was the question. Yes. That does not mean that AE is equal to CE. No. Could it be? Sure. It could be. But that is not what the theorem is stating. The theorem is stating that the product of AE times ED is equal to CE times EB. Okay? Yes, sir. No, the question was, wouldn't then they be congruent? And again, no. The answer is no, because it's that the products are equal. So, for example, gentlemen, if I had this as a 6 and this as a 4 and then CE was a 3, 24 equals 3 times BE. So, 24 would equal 24. Now, you may say to me, but Moro, those are equal. No, they are not equal. And I'm sorry, that's not 24. That's uh, 3BE, you divide by 3, and BE equals 8. So even though their products are equal, their sums are not. 6 plus 4 is 10. 3 plus 8 is 11. So no, the chords are not equal distances, but... The products of the parts of each chord are equal to the products of the part of the other chord. Okay? Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay. Next. Thank you. Tangent secant power theorem. Again, we're not talking about the tangent secant angle, which is half of its intercepted arc. No. This time we're talking about distances again, length. If a tangent segment and a secant segment are drawn from an external point to a circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent segment is equal to the product of the measures of the entire secant segment and its external part. Let's think about this. We have a tangent secant. This is my tangent, DC. DC is my tangent. The whole entire secant segment is AC. That's the whole secant segment. And we remember hopefully doing this. And then this part over here, this guy right here, 
That's my external part. So, the formula here to find any missing parts here is the tangent segment squared equals the whole entire secant segment, the whole thing, times the external part, which is this guy. Does that make sense? Are you sure? Okay. And we're going to get some examples in there in, in a little bit. May I continue? Okay, I'll give a second. Thank you. But wait, this is on video. Okay, so, secant, secant power theorem. Okay, theorem 97. 97 theorems you have learned. Wow. Secant, secant power theorem. Same thing. Don't think of the secant, secant angle, which is half of A minus B. No, this is a secant, secant power theorem. We're talking about a distance. If two secant segments are drawn from an external point to a circle, then the product of the measures of one secant segment and its external part is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant segment and its external part. Okay. In this particular case, I've got two secant segments here. Okay. And I am really sorry, but this is wrong. This should be an E, and I apologize. Um, and that should be an E as well. And that should be an E. And that should be an E. Okay, I really apologize about that. That was my fault. Sorry. Okay, so what do we have here, though? What I'm telling you is that DE, the product of DE, the whole secant segment, times CE, which is the external part, must be equal to the product of the other secant segment and its external part. So DE, which is this whole secant segment, times CE, which is that secant segment's external part, equals BE, the whole entire other secant segment, times AE, which is the external part of that second secant segment. That makes sense. Awesome. Okay, that's it. Now we'll just do a couple examples, but that's it. We are done with circles. You know everything there is to know about a circle now, and it's a lot. You know about arcs and angles and inscribed angles and chords and diameters and circumference, arc measure, arc length, sector area. Uh, I mean, there's nothing you don't know now about a circle. Very proud of you. Okay, so let's do some examples if you don't mind. All right, let's just knock this out. So for x, y, and z, for a, we're solving for x. This is a chord-chord power theorem. Very good. So what do we know? Someone already said the answer. The answer was 4. That's because 6 times 2 must be equal to 3 times x. So x equals 4. Yes, I'm not even going to bother you with the math because that's Mickey Mouse. Now here, I've got a tangent secant. Tangent secant. So y squared equals 18 times, uh, I'm sorry, 16, no, I was right, 18 times 2, because it's the whole secant segment times its external part. So y squared equals 36, so y technically equals plus or minus 6, but you cannot have a negative distance, 
So y would equal 6 here, gentlemen. No, not hypothetically. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So now, I want to find the entire length of the secant segment with the external part of 3. I want to find z. So this is secant secant. So be careful with this one. A lot of people always mess up. Yeah, go for it. Tell me. Okay, so it's 3 times c plus 3. Very good. The whole times the external part equals equals 12 times 4. It's the whole secant times the external part, my brother. So this is 3z plus 9 equals 48. So 3z equals 39. So z equals 13. So the whole kit and caboodle is 13. What would the inside part be, just for giggles? 10, exactly. Does that make sense? Okay, one more, if you don't mind. Um, okay, I got tangent segment PT measures 8 centimeters. So PT is 8 centimeters. The radius of the circle is 6 centimeters. And hold on, I messed up. This guy should be, hold on, let me, I'm sorry. There is the center, okay? This, or actually, wait, the, the radius, yes, that is the center. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So the radius is 6. So remember, that means that from here to here is 6, and from here to here is also 6. They want to find the distance from P to the circle. So they want to find X, okay? So what do I have here? I've got tangent squared, which is 64. Excellent equals x times x plus 12. Because remember, it's the external times the whole entire secant segment. Very good job. So this is going to be 0 equals x squared plus 12x minus 64. And I'm going to go ahead and... Yep. We got x, x, x plus 16, x minus 4. So x is going to equal negative 16 or 4. Cannot be negative. Cannot be negative. So it must be 4. So, so x equals 4. Okay? Does that make sense, everybody? Awesome.